ever have. Because I'm always sitting here furious. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're on. Cool. So today I'm going to talk about heterochromia iridis in dogs. And I say in dogs because this can also happen to horses, cats, and people. Um, but I'm going to touch base, touch base on it in people a little bit, but primarily focus on it in dogs. So what exactly is heterochromia? So it's a color difference in the eye based on um, an abnormal distribution of melanin. Um, and so it's kind of broken up into, I'm going to focus on the two that it's broken into, so either sectoral or segmental heterochromia or complete heterochromia. So with complete, um, one eye is brown, one eye is blue, or there's just two eyes that are two different colors. With sectoral or segmental, there's one section of the eye that's a different color than the rest. Um, and then other sources will break it up into three sections, um, with that being um, the third section is there's a ring of another color in it, but just for simplification, I'm just splitting it between segmental and complete. Um, and then these are pictures of Luna Bell. She has segmental heterochromia in her left eye. So you can see like right here, or in this picture might be a little better, there's a blue edge to her eye and then the rest of it is brown. Um, so what actually causes this? So it's very sporadic when it happens. Rarely is it associated with certain congenital syndromes that I'll mention on the next slide. Um, but as we know, the color in the eye is determined by the melanin, with a lack of melanin is a lack of pigment and a lack of color. Um, and due to this lack of color gives rise to the blue area. Um, heterochromia can also be caused by injury to the eye. So whether that be trauma, melanoma, neuroblastoma, glaucoma, or even any medications that you're taking for glaucoma can cause this to happen to you. So as I mentioned, it can be the cause of congenital syndrome, and the most common one that it's seen is, is Wardenburg syndrome. So this is a combination of genetic factors um, that cause differentiation in the pigment of eyes, skin, hair, deafness, etc. cetera. Um, but this is the most common congenital syndrome that this is expressed in. So congenital being you're born with it. And then this syndrome is cast um, autosomal, autosomal dominantly. So how exactly does this happen? In the image to the left, you can see that the brown eye, so this brown eye has more melanin than the blue eye. Um, so therefore, if you're having a lack of melanin, you're likely gonna have blue eyes. Um, so eye color is inherited. And so you might be wondering if eye color is inherited, how does this miscoloration happen? But the inheritance pattern of eye color is more complex than just one gene telling you that your eyes are gonna be blue or brown. There's other genes that determine the pattern and placement of this melanin in your eye. Um, so that can be called as hyperpigmented or hypopigmented, depending on if you have more or less melanin. So how common is this? We might have seen um, dogs either on TV or online or even have dogs of your own that have different color eyes. Um, and these are the common breeds that it affects. And I believe the reason Luna Bell has segmental heterochromia is because she may have part husky in her. Um, and then this picture right here is showing a complete heterochromia. Um, but how rare is this? In people, as in humans, um, it's as rare as six out of a thousand people um, can generally, so they're born with it. Uh, but only 200,000 people in the United States have heterochromia at all. So why is it this list of breeds? Why these breeds? Why don't we see them in more breeds? Um, that's actually unknown. So these genes are difficult to track down. As I mentioned, it's not just one gene that they're looking at to determine heterochromia. It's multiple genes that code for the pattern and placement of this melanin. Um, it also has been known to be linked to coat color. So it's more prevalent in dogs that have coats such as merle or dapple or white. Um, I also read in one article that it was linked to gender, but only in Dalmatians. It wasn't known to be linked to any other gender and other breeds, but for Dalmatian, it was much more prevalent in females than it is in males. So the research for the genetic expression of this trait is ongoing, so we can learn more of why this is happening to only this, like these breeds. So are there any health risks to having heterochromia? None unless it exists only due to an underlying congenital syndrome, as I mentioned, the Wardenburg syndrome earlier. Um, also, it's a myth that heterochromia causes early onset vision loss or blindness. It has no effect on their vision whatsoever. Um, but the only known evidence is light sensitivity due to a decreased melanin. 
Um, but this goes for anyone with light colored eyes. So the melanin pigment helps block light from moving through the iris to your retina, which causes pain, such as like if you're staring at the sun. Um, but this light sensitivity goes for everyone with light colored eyes, not just dogs with heterochromia. So other than that, you can live a healthy life with this unique trait. And then these are just pictures. Uh, this is a horse uh, with segmental heterochromia, um, a dog with complete, Luna Bell with segmental, and a cat with complete. Look at that. <laughs> Green mm -hmm. and blue, wow. And those are my sources. Give her a soft round of applause. Yes, very interesting. Yeah, so that's a polygenic trait then, when you, when you come up mm -hmm. with multiple genes affecting the outcome. And that's harder to study because you don't know exactly how they're interacting and all that. So that's nice to know it doesn't really affect the animal's health. <laughs> And I, I was going to add, then the, the animal that is born without any pigment, you know, that's an albino. And they're always photosensitive. Yeah. They're always, like, I was born in North Dakota, and there's a buffalo herd that they have for people to look at buffalo. And um, they had an albino buffalo born. And the Native American Indians think it's a sign. It's sort of like almost a sacred animal. And I was able to see it one time with the herd, and it was very clear that it didn't like the sun because the rest of the herd is in the pasture grazing out in the full sun. And where was the albino calf at this time? Hiding in the trees and the bushes to get some shade because they're so photosensitive. I mean, it was all white. There was no pigment on the animal. And it's only happened once or twice in history that a buffalo would be born like that way. And you know, there's a lot of reservations out in the middle part of the United States, and the Indians think it's a very sacred animal that it was born white. I think they even have a name for it, but I can't remember what it is, but yeah. Okay, and Luna Bell is here to give us an example. Yeah. Perfect. Oops, sorry, Luna Bell. 